Welcome to a slide presentation on full mouth radiograph images. The slide presentation is intended for the dental assisting student. So full mouth radiographs or images are also known as an FMX survey or an FMX series or in a lot of textbooks the periapical examination. In the slide presentation, we'll also be looking at mounting the images or radiographic films of an FMX. Let's look at an FMX. First off, how many films do you see? If you said 18, you are correct. So this is an 18 image or film FMX. What are the indications for a full mouth x-ray series? In reviewing the terminology indication, the, this is the reasons why we would be taking an FMX for our patient. What are the reasons the dentist would want to have an FMX? If you're thinking to diagnose dental disease, you are correct. Dental disease such as caries, or periodontal disease because the dentist can see the bone level in these images. Uh, perhaps they're going to look at the apical area, the apex of a root of a tooth to see if there is an abscess present. Are there any impacted teeth? Those can be seen in radiographic images in periapical images. Um, are there any cysts or tumors? And so these are the types of dental conditions and oral conditions that a dentist would use to diagnose and they would use an FMX periapical images for diagnosing. Here's another FMX and how many films are in this FMX? If you said 20, right again. What size film was used? We covered this in a previous presentation. So we have our number two film size, and then we have smaller film for the anterior teeth, for those anterior images, and this is a number one size film. Let's look at the types of images in an FMX survey. Specifically, what anatomical structures do you see in each radiograph or in each image? First we have on the patient's maxillary right posterior area, we have periapical images of the molars and the premolars. So periapical, peri meaning around, apical at the tip of the root, and so a periapical image allows the dentist to see the whole tooth from the crown to the apex and the surrounding area. Very helpful in diagnosing periodontal disease, uh, endodontic conditions, uh, tumors, impactions. So the more the dentist can see on the image, the better the image is for diagnosing. So the anatomical structures would be a crown of the tooth, a root, the apex, uh, we see a sinus, um, in some cases we see the enamel and the dentin, pulp chambers, and pulpal canals. We also see the bone level. So I'm going to give you some uh, time, or actually just pause the slide presentation, and you may want to um, quiz yourself to see what type of anatomical structures do you see in each radiograph or image. Well, I've moved on to the answers. So we see in an FMX, in periapical images and bite wing images, certain anatomical structures. So I've labeled this for you. You have the crown, you have the root of the tooth, you have the apex. In some very clear 
radiographic images, you can see the furcation, which is actually, or trifurcation, which is down here. Sorry, my slide is a, a bit off here, so it's down here. Uh, you can see the outline and the area of the sinus, the maxillary sinuses. You can see a pulp chamber and the pulpal canal in the teeth. Uh, we see the superior border of the mandible, which also we can, uh, can see bone, the alveolar process, the level of the alveolar process. Here is a bifurcation for the mandibular first molar. We also see the apex. So these are all anatomical structures that we see, anatomical structures of the teeth, and of the surrounding anatomy. Uh, in this particular lower left canine periapical, we can see the inferior border of the mandible. Uh, here's another look at enamel and dentin, another look at a bifurcation of the mandibular left first molar, uh, superior border of the mandible, here is, again, my slide is off, sorry, right where the, the circle is, the trifurcation of tooth number 14, uh, more sinus, the maxillary periapical images do tend to show the sinus area. Something else to notice are the difference in crown size. So, of course, based on dental anatomy, anatomic structure, the crowns of the maxillary central incisors are much bigger than the crowns of the mandibular central incisors. Also, we want to notice the incisal or occlusal plane. For the mandibular teeth, in radiographic images, the occlusal plane tend to slopes up as toward the midline. For the maxillary dental arch, the occlusal plane tends to slope downward from the posterior to the anterior to the midline. So these anatomic structures are going to be very helpful in film mounting. So if you're still working with film in a dental office or you're in a program and you're working, a dental assisting program and you're working with film, with film, it's very important to learn all the anatomical structures in a specific dental image so that you can mount them quickly and mount them so that they are anatomically correct. Very important because when a dentist looks at images, uh, especially radiographic film, they're counting on you to have mounted them correctly um, so that there is no mistakes for uh, a patient's diagnosis. So let's look at mounting films of an FMX. We have certain armamentarium that will help us achieve this particular skill. Uh, there are view boxes, which is a lighted box. You can see some assistance here. This is kind of a, a big view box, but they're using a view box to look at films. And then we have a holder called a film mount. And it has little windows for all of the periapicals and bite wings for an FMX. And they come in the 18 um, windowed mount or the 20. So one step is to determine and remember how many images you have in the FMX to have the get the appropriate mount for that FMX. Then you want to take all of your films, because if you've processed them, they all just come out in a little pile. So you have this pile of film in your hand. You go to a view box. You're going to place all the bumps out or towards you, or set the, so the bump is convexed. Then you want to separate 
the periapicals, the PAs, here and here, and the anteriors, and separate them from the bite wings. So you have those separated, another little pile or stack of film. Then you want to look at those images and separate them into maxillary and mandibular. And to do this, you do need to keep in mind the shape of teeth, what the molars look like, what the premolars look like, what canines look like, what central incisors look like, how they differ from maxillary to mandibular, um, the uh, bifurcation or the furcations will be very helpful, where the maxillary look like they're fused together, the mandibular molars uh, tend to have a very clear bifurcation. Uh, you can match existing restorations if the patient has restorations or any dental treatment. Like in this one, they've had a endodontic treatment, so you could match that for a certain size. And so that knowledge of anatomical structures is very important in mounting. And here is a repeat of the anatomical structures and landmarks of the teeth and surrounding tissue. So um, you can see the apex, and again, the furcation is down here. My apologies for this arrow. Um, so the trifurcation or the bifurcation, and also the slants of the occlusal incisal plane. That can also help you in mounting. So to make a list of mounting methods, first you want to turn all the radiographs with the dot or the bump out towards you. So that is that dot is convex. For beginners, you want to group the images into various areas or various images. So you separate the bite wings from the posterior PAs and the anterior PAs. Make sure that you are also aware of the patient's right and left and the maxillary and mandibular images, the differences. Then you pick them up uh, after viewing them on a view box. You pick them up and you place them in the FMX mount according to anatomical identification. So you must have the correct images for the patient's right and the correct images for the patient's left. Now, these are the steps that you would follow if you are a beginner. I want you to keep in mind that once you want to learn this skill, if you're going to use film, so that you have speed. You should be able to mount an FMX in less than five minutes, in two minutes. So your goal, rather than to work with all of these very helpful but very tedious step-by-steps, your goal is to have a little pile of radiographs, pick up one, determine what the image is, Make sure you have the bump toward you or the dot, the ID dot toward you, and place it in the appropriate frame in the mouth, which is eliminating these first three steps. But this is your goal in learning how to mount quickly and accurately. I thank you for listening, and please visit uh, YouTube again for more videos from Dental Assisting LC. Thank you.